Today we're going to look at the causes of depreciation and the two methods used to calculate the depreciation, the reducing balance method and the straight line method. Uh, the two causes of depreciation are wear and tear, which basically means that the asset loses value because the parts of the assets wear out, they become less efficient. Um, the idea can be likened to um, uh, the reason why a second hand car is worth a lot less because it's already been used. And then, of course, the second reason for depreciation will be because the asset that you're using, usually a fixed asset, will no longer become uh, relevant to the business in terms of its objectives moving forward. So the best example there to use is a boat that, as the company expands, no longer is um, the right size to carry all the customers across. So they have to uh, upgrade to a bigger, larger boat. And so the old boat becomes obsolete. The two methods we're going to use and look at today is the reducing balance method for depreciation and the straight line method. So the first method we're going to look at today is the straight line method of depreciation, which is the simplest and most common method used um, in accounting by business owners. It simply um, is the purchase cost divided by the number of years you expect the fixed asset to last. So if we look at the security system here, we bought it for 25000 we expect it to last for five years. So using that, we simply take the 25,000, divide it by the expected life in years, which is five, which means that each year we are going to depreciate the alarm system by $5,000. Understanding the difference between the annual depreciation and the overall depreciation of the assets is very, very important. Obviously, in the income statement or the profit and loss accounts, you are allowed by the tax authority to um, take away an expense of depreciation. It's called a provision because unlike other expenses, um, such as electricity, where you would have to actually physically send the money to the electricity company, there is no one knocking at your door asking for depreciation. But it does happen, and so therefore it's allowed to be taken off as a cost or an expense in your profit and loss account in your income statement. So if we look at the annual charge of the straight line method for the alarm system, we said that that was 5000 and so that depreciation would be the amount that you put into your income statement. In your balance sheet, you would show the historic cost, the annual total depreciation, I should say, and the overall net book value of the asset at the end of the year. So if we look here at year one, the total depreciation is the annual depreciation because it's only been depreciated for one year. And so the historic cost would be 25000 the total depreciation 5 which means that the net book value of the asset is 20000 Now in the second year, you would charge another 5000 to your income statement, take it away as an expense to reduce your net profit. But in your balance sheet, you would show the same original cost, but now your depreciation is going to be two years' worth of depreciation. The 5000 you took last year plus the 5000 this year which gives you a total of $10,000. When you take that away from your 25,000, it gives you today's market value or net book value, which is 15,000. The same pattern carries on next year. Again, you would charge 5,000 to your profit and loss account as the depreciation for that actual year. But the total depreciation in your balance sheet would now be three years worth of 5,000, i.e. three times five, $15,000. And you can see your net book value is reducing all the time. If you originally paid 25, take away 15, your asset now is worth only $10,000. And that pattern continues into year four and year five. So if we look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of the straight line method of depreciation, the most obvious advantage is that it's very simple to calculate. Um, and you use the same amount each year. So it makes it much, much simpler to work out your balance sheet entries and your income statement uh, entry in the profit and loss. Of course, it encourages long-term thinking because rather than just ignoring the fact that your asset is losing value because you're using it each year, um, you are actually making allowances and reducing uh, your net profit each year. The major disadvantage, of course, is that it's not very realistic because it assumes that a car loses the same value or a machine 
uses the same value each year for the life of the fixed asset. But of course, most cars and machines lose most of their value in the first few years. And then as they get older, they lose less and less value in terms of depreciation. So therefore, it's unrealistic. And it relies on guesstimates of the actual life um, of the fixed assets. How do we know the machine's going to last five years? It's all guesswork, really. So the second method of depreciation is known as the reducing balance method. Um, it's much more realistic in terms of it takes a larger amount of depreciation in the first few years and then reduces the amount of depreciation, hence the name reducing balance, as the asset um, lives longer and longer and works longer for your business. So the reducing balance um, method of depreciation is much, much uh, more difficult to calculate, but it's more realistic. So if we took the same alarm system, $25,000, we would use the reducing balance method by calculating uh, the annual depreciation based on a percentage that will be given to you in the exam, multiplied by the actual value of the asset each year. So when we start, of course, the value of the asset is $25,000 in this case. So the reducing balance depreciation for the first year will be simply the $25,000, which in this case is the first historic cost, multiplied by 25%, which means that you get a annual depreciation of 6200 and 50, 25% of the 25,000. This will change and will reduce each year because the 25% is going to be calculated based on the actual book value. So unlike straight line where the depreciation remains the same, with the reducing balance method, the depreciation rate, or amount I should say, reduces each year. So if we look at how that would be represented in the balance sheet, you would have the historic cost of 25000 um, the annual depreciation which would go into your profit and loss account in the income statement of 6250 is also the total depreciation so far at the end of the first year, and that would leave you with a net book value of 18750 Now obviously that's no different to the straight line method so far. But with the reducing balance, the 25% that you would have used always based on the historic cost under the straight line instead is used to calculate the depreciation based on the actual value of the asset at the end of each year. So here we would take the 18750, which is the market value of the fixed asset, in this case the alarm system, and we would multiply that by 25% which would give us a annual depreciation of 4,688. That would go into your profits and loss account for the year. And then when you add it to the depreciation from last year, you're left with a total depreciation of 10,938. And that is the figure that will be shown as total depreciation. And that leaves you then with a net book value for the asset at the end of the second year of 14,063. Then at the end of the second year, going into the third, you multiply it by 0 0.25. And this time again, your reduced balance will be a depreciation of 3,516. When you add that to last year's depreciation of a total of 10,938, you are presented with an overall depreciation of 14,454. And that leaves you with a net book value now of 10,548. So the total is getting larger, but you can see that the annual depreciation started at 6,250 for the first year. In the second year, it was reduced to 4,688. And in the third year, it's reduced again to 3,516. So if we look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of re the reducing balance method of depreciation, the most obvious one, of course, is the fact that it is much, much more complicated to work out the total depreciation than the annual depreciation. But it is very realistic in terms of how the assets 
do in real life depreciate by large amounts initially and then by a smaller and smaller amount as the asset lasts through the years. Um, but the other disadvantage to take into account is because um, investors or owners will see a large amount of depreciation in the first few years, it might discourage them from actually investing in the um, high cost of the fixed asset in the first place.